Whenever you open QGIS for the first time, or again, once you have opened it already, you'll find that your screen might look very different to the one that you are seeing right now. That is entirely normal. QGIS allows you to customize your screen, so you won't necessarily see what you are seeing right now on the video. However, certain aspects are always visible and you can customize your view of QGIS as you become more accustomed to it and as you work with it more. What you are currently seeing on your screen is the browser or table of content on your left hand side. Below that you see a window where your layers, once you have added these to your map project, so these are your geospatial layers or your geographic layers, will draw once, of course, you have added them to your, your project. On the right hand side, you see the processing toolbox with all the tools that are available to you in QGIS. If you have plugins that are also activated, these will also become available on the right hand side. At the top, you see the default menu, which is the very first layer that you see there. Of course, you have the titles of the various menu items, and then you see various functionalities as in the form of buttons. These are standard that will appear in any kind of QGIS view. Below that, you have a little bit more of customization. I have quite a few buttons there or icons there that are related to plugins or specific functionality that I have installed and activated that might not be visible to you in your current view. The browser or the table of contents on your left hand side is how you access your data or your layers. It is very similar to the Windows Explorer if you are used to the Windows operating system and you can see that you can actually deal with it in exactly the same manner. So, for example, if you are looking for a specific data file that you have downloaded to your downloads folder, you would go to your C drive. Now, this is based on the Windows operating system. You would go to the user, so that would be you, and navigate to the downloads folder and you would find the data that you have downloaded available to you there. So it does function very much like the Windows Explorer. Now, once you have accessed your data, you can of course add this to your map view. And once you have done that, it will appear in your layers window. Now, the layers window is by default drawn on the left hand side below the browser or the table of contents. However, you can dock this window anywhere where you want to in your map view. For example, should you choose not to have to view it at the bottom left, so drawing below your table of contents, you can simply undock it and drag it wherever you want to draw it. So there's a lot of functionality that QGIS allows you to have in terms of customizing your particular view. However, I do like my layer list below my table of content. It just makes sense to draw it there. So I will dock it again where it was previously. One of the most important toolbars that you have in QGIS is the processing toolbar, which you see on your right hand side. This is how you access any of your tools. And this is something that you definitely want active when you are working in the product. However, you can also dock it anywhere else. As before, you can drag it around your view. And of course, you can also close it. If for some reason you closed this particular window and you want to reopen it, simply go to processing and click on toolbox and it will become available to you again. A very important functionality in QGIS is that you can activate toolbars again if you happen to close them by accident. You simply go to view and toolbars and you can activate any of the many toolbars that are available to you in the event that you have closed it by accident. And also 
to activate your panels. So for example, if you happen to have closed your browser, so I'll deactivate it now, your browser is now gone. You go to view and panels and just simply click into the checkbox there. Your browser is going to be reactivated. In other words, your table of contents will be activated again in your project that you're currently working on. So if you ever do lose functionality in terms of closing your panels by accident or your toolbars, just simply go to the view menu and either navigate it to, to panels or to toolbars. Another functionality that is quite nice is that you can shift toolbars around. For example, if I would like to shift this particular toolbar here, so I click on the toolbar with my mouse and then I just drag it to where I want it to draw. In terms of what you are seeing in your window right now in your video is um, the basic functionality of QGIS. Now you've got various menu items, for example, the project tab, the editing tab, and so forth. These all give you different functionality available in QGIS. And below that are common functions in terms of the functionality that you can actually perform in QGIS. The little hand, of course, is panning. So if you click on that, you can pan through the window. You just click with your mouse and you can drag the window or the map itself of where you want to be. Then you can also pan to a section of the map. All right, so this is a little bit, um, it, it goes in bigger steps than the simple pan that you did before. You can zoom in with a magnifying glass. You can also zoom out. So very similar to the normal Windows operating system functionality. You can also zoom to the full screen. Then you can go to a previous view or the next view that you were at and various other items. If you'd like to investigate or identify a particular feature, you press the little, um, the I and on your screen and whatever you click on will call up an identifying window of information that that can draw up. Then you can also perform calculations or summary statistics. There is your toolbox. So that is simply your toolbox panel that you can switch on and off. The other way to access that is going to processes, processing and the toolbox menu, of course. You can also measure items in your screen by simply clicking on your screen and various other functionality. The best way to explore this is by actually using each individual button or icon with data that you have to familiarize yourself with this functionality. And the last bit of information here is that the bottom of your screen, you can see there is information shown to you in terms of the scale and coordinate system. The coordinate system is related to the coordinate reference system that your map draws in. The very large numbers here, so into the hundreds of thousands, indicate that this particular map is using a planar projection in meters or an equivalent unit, could be feet or miles or anything like that. However, this is not drawn in latitude and longitude because of the large value shown here. As you move your cursor across the map view, these numbers will change because it gives you the information of where you are drawing right at that moment with your cursor. The scale gives you the scale of your map view. You can, of course, change this by zooming in and out. It has the same functionality in terms of using the mouse button to zooming in and out. And then you can also use a magnifying functionality here as well. And that concludes this particular video.